Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty and I am super excited to bring to you a collab. This is a collab with Robin over at Crafts Unleashed. Oh my gosh, this is my second collab with her. I love her so much. You guys, please go check her channel out after you watch this video. She's got some bead decor for you as well, and I know it's going to be amazing. So we are starting out with some Dollar Tree Wildflower Florals. We also have some Ball Mums from Walmart and the daisies. I'm really not sure where those came from. They've been in my stash forever. Um, so I'm sorry. I don't know where those came from. I have this canvas bag that I picked up at Dollar Tree for a dollar last year. So excited to get to use it. And I have this double-sided wood round from Target. I have my sage chalk paint by Hello Hobby and the Tuscan Sun and some various paints from Waverly. And I'll tell you what they are as I'm using them. You guys, I have eight, count them, eight <laughs> bumblebee decor DIYs for you today. Um, I have, as you can see, a door sign that we'll be making. I have some tear tray decor that I'm super excited about. And I have some tabletop decor as well. So please stick around and watch all eight of these quick and easy DIYs. I hope you enjoy them. Let's get to crafting. You see that I took my um, wood round and just traced around it and cut that Busy Bee canvas bag. I wish they had put that on both sides of the bag so I would have got two of them, but they only did it on one side of the bag, but I can't complain. Like I said, when I bought it, it was only a dollar. So I love this and I opted to put it on the black side um, because it, if I cut it a little short or it wasn't quite right, it would still look okay because there's black writing or lettering on this side of the of the sign. So it would look like it's supposed to be that way. If you could see just a little bit of the black edging sticking out, it would be fine. And also because on the other side, I think I'm going to do a double-sided sign at some point, not in this video, but I could take that other side, flip it over and do something else on it. So I love that I have that option. So I'm just getting this glued down with a lot of Mod Podge. At first I thought I was going to just paint the canvas bag first, then cut it out and then my podge it on. But I said, no, because what if the paint um, smears or kind of bleeds when I put the Mod Podge on it? I didn't even want to find out if that was possible. So I Mod Podged it to the wood round first and then went back in and started my painting. And I am currently using my Hello Hobby Chalk Paint in the color Tuscan Sun to paint the bumblebee and to paint the... Um, center part of the flowers. I like to paint everything in one color that I'm going to use that one color for and then clean my brush with a baby wipe and then start my next color because I'm going to use the same brush because it's very small and it's good for the detail work that I'm doing. I enjoyed painting this so much. This is the Hello Hobby Chalk Paint in the color, I want to say sage. And if it's not Hello Hobby and Sage, it is Waverly in Moss. I will also be using the Waverly in Celery. I will be using the Hello Hobby in, no, I'll be using Waverly in Lavender and Waverly in Ballet Slipper. So I'm just going to get everything all painted and then move on to the wings and I was trying to be really careful and not paint over the black that they have already um, on this this picture but I quickly realized that if I did kind of get a little bit of paint on it I would just go on with my sharpie and clean it right back up it was so easy to do if I painted over some of the veining in the leaves or in the butterfly wings super easy to clean that up and fix it so I truly enjoyed this. I love painting. It relaxes me. It, this was fun. And if you guys love to paint, this is a good one to do. If you can find this canvas bag, I did not see it out this year, but if you can find it or you already have it in your stash, this is a good project, relaxing, and just you get a beautiful door hanger when you're done. 
So this is the lavender by Waverly that I was telling you about. And I'm doing these lavender cone flowers. At least that's what they reminded me of. So that's why I did them in the lavender. I love purple. You guys know it's my favorite color. And this is the Waverly Ballet Slipper. Going to just paint some of those little flowers pink on the outside. I thought just a little spring color to this would just be so nice. And you guys, I'm having a hard time with this video. You know, I always tell you, please comment down below what's your favorite. I usually know which one's my favorite. I'm having a hard time with this one. I, I have to let you know at the end of the video. I, it's they're all so pretty I just really like them all it's it's hard to tell it's hard to choose so we'll see how I land at the end of this video if you're new to my channel thank you thank you thank you for coming by I appreciate you so much if you like what you see and you'd like to see more please consider hitting that subscribe button it tells YouTube you like my content. It pushes me out a little bit and it helps my channel to grow. Don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so you never miss out on another cute and crafty DIY with D. And for all of my, my friends and family that have been with me from the beginning, thank you. Thank you for coming back. I love you guys so much and you are amazing. So I'm just going in with my Sharpie and cleaning everything up. Look at that. That just came out so cute. So here you see me cutting my florals up. I often do that because I want to place them the way I want to place them. I don't want to have to just stick them on in a bunch because that's the way I bought them. So I cut everything up and then I just design it the way I want. And I like to gather them together with some jute twine once I get them all arranged the way I want them. And then I'm going to put two holes at the top of this sign and I'm going to use some paddle wire from Dollar Tree to wire them to the wood round. Now, I love to wire more than hot glue when I'm adding my florals for a door sign simply because the sun will heat that hot glue up and you will look outside and your florals will be laying on the ground. Ask me how I know. But I did have a family member tell me, if you use Gorilla Glue, that won't happen. Gorilla makes a hot glue stick, and she said that that will not happen. So I'll have to try that, but I don't mind wiring them. I know that they'll stay, or even tying them on with jute cord. I will do that as well. Now, if it's a sign that's going in the house, hot glue is fine. I don't even worry about it. But for this, I wired them just to make sure that nothing falls off. I love this buffalo check ribbon. It's not really buffalo check. I guess it's a gingham that I got from Hobby Lobby. I picked this up a while back when it was on sale. It is one of my favorite ribbons. It is pricey. It's $7.99. So I definitely wait until it's like 40% or even sometimes 50% off before I purchase it. So I'm just making my Olivia bow and it is from Olivia's Romantic Home. If you do not know who she is, check her out. Her description will be in well her link will be in the description box below as will robin from crafts unleashed my collab buddy today for this beautiful bee decor i can't wait to see what she's got in store because she's already crafted some beautiful bee decor as you could see in the picture that i put up of her in that little collage and she's got more ideals to to give us so i'm excited to see what's going on over there so please stop over to her channel check her out and tell her d said hi so I've got my loops made, I've got my tails made, got the dovetails cut in them, and I'm just going to pinch everything together and tie it with a jute cord. And then the flowers and the ribbon will be attached with, again, some paddle wire. And then we'll call this one done. I'm going to go ahead and secure, or not secure, but put a little piece of ribbon on the back where the wire is so that it doesn't scratch my door. Just fluffing and arranging and fussing with my bow. How cute is that? It's hard to choose. I can't stand it. 
I want to say this one is my favorite, but I know there's something else in this video that is my favorite as well. So I, I can't, I can't do it. I don't know. You guys, let me know what you think. It's, it's a hard choice for me. Let me know what you guys like. And here it is, you guys, the final DIY, DIY number one, and seven more to go. So you guys, here's DIY number two. I'm using some of the wood letters from Hobby Lobby. I have two of the old signs from Dollar Tree. They're left over from Halloween. I have one of the nesting boxes with the bees already on it. And I took the lid and cut out these two bees from the lid. And I have one of the long signs from Dollar Tree with bees and butterflies. And I'm going to use the bees from that. And I have Waverly chalk paint and ink and ivory. I have a finio left over from a lamp that I had, I have some all-purpose glue and a Sharpie and some really pretty sunflower tape. Please forgive me because I don't know where that tape came from. I really don't. And I have various ribbons. So these two box signs were from Halloween. They had uh, purple and orange glitter and pumpkins on it and I just peeled that off. And when I peeled it off, one of them looked really old and weathered to me. Well, they both actually did and I love that look. So I'm just going in with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and I'm dry brushing on top of one of the boxes and I'm not trying to get it filled in at all. You guys know how I do it. I just kind of do one coat, let the paint fall where it may and then I go back in and I just dress it down anyway. Um, I just love it. I can't explain it any other way. It's my thing. And then I'm wiping it down with a baby wipe and I'm going to sand it down some more. I want it to look really old. And then I'm cleaning up a little bit with my ladybug. And then the other uh, wood square or I don't know, it was like a shadow box kind of thing when you flip it over. That one I am going to give a good solid coat of ivory paint. And then I am going to go in on this bumblebee because I love it, but the colors are not the colors that I'm choosing today. So I'm going in with my Sharpie and I'm outlining everything. And then I'll go back in with my black paint and the color ink by Waverly and paint my stripes. And then I am going to go in with my Waverly and ivory and I'm going to paint the wings and the wings actually took two to three coats of paint. I painted both of the bumblebees, but I'm actually only going to use one. And this is going to be a double-sided sign, you guys. I'm so excited to make this one. Um, so I'm just taking my ruler and giving myself a straight line so I can go in in my own handwriting and write the word queen. Because this sign is going to be queen B on this side. And I'll just go back in with my Sharpie and darken everything up. And now I'm going to get my bumblebee glued down using some hot glue. And now for the back of the sign or front of the sign, whichever way you choose to stand it, the other side of the sign, I'm going to be using some of this really pretty sunflower 
duct tape. Again, I'm sorry. I don't, I really don't know where I got this tape from. I am everywhere all the time picking up this or that. And I really don't know where this tape came from. If any of you have this tape, please comment where you got it. Cause I don't know. So I'm going to cut my tape in half because I just want some at the top and at the bottom just for a border. And I'm going to use these wood letters that I got from Hello Hobby at around Thanksgiving or fall season when they have blessed, thankful, and grateful. And I'm going to use blessed. So I'm taking my two little bumblebees that I cut out from the lid of the nesting box. And when I cut them out, I did add some antenna using some black paddle wire from Dollar Tree. And I glued that to the top of the bees for their antenna. So this sign says, be blessed. Just getting those glued down and cleaning up any of the uh, glue strings or spider webs or you know, whatever you call them when you've got too much glue and it's just kind of stringy. And then I'm just getting rid of some extra glue that's kind of sitting where I don't want it. It's a quick fix. This one came out really nice as well and is a favorite, but I still can't decide which is the favorite. Taking my hot glue and I used a little bit of wood glue for that short-term, long-term hold. And I'm getting the word blessed glued down. And I love the natural wood color of this word, so I did not paint it or change it in any way. I left it as is. Just gluing down my other bumblebee. And then we're going to get these two boxes glued together using wood glue and hot glue. I'm going to take a baby wipe and clean up that wood glue. And I like that the um, boxes where the black tape or black tape, black paint is, was already kind of worn and weathered and I didn't paint over it or anything. I left it just the way it was because I liked the look. Trying to decide what ribbon I want to use and the honeycomb ribbon is going to win. I picked this ribbon up at Dollar Tree. They had a medium width and a thinner width and I got two rolls of each. but I love that pop of yellow on that black. So that's why the honeycomb was the best one to use for this DIY. So I'm just going to get the ribbon glued down all the way around using some hot glue. And at first I did just the top and the sides and I really didn't focus on the bottom where the box is going to sit because I felt like, well, it's, it's going to be sitting there. Nobody's going to see it. But when I picked it up and I could see it, I didn't like how it looked. So I went back in and added some more tape to the bottom just to make it all seamless and one piece. It looked unfinished and that's what bothered me about it. So I fixed it right here. I, I didn't, I didn't like that. Had to go back in and add some more, but this is the cutest sign. So I'm taking this finial that I have from, actually I had a set of lamps that I was getting rid of and I had put them both aside to go in the trash bin. And then I looked at the finial and I said, oh, wait a minute, I can use those. So I unscrewed the finials off of both of the lamps and then I put them in the trash bin. They were just super old and outdated and it wasn't really anything I could work with or DIY or change but I did grab the finials off of them. They were just little side table lamps. So we're gonna fix the bottom of this sign and we're gonna call it done.
Here's the finished DIY, you guys. DIY number two. Queen B on one side and B blessed on the other. I love how this turned out. I hope you guys do too. Thank you again to everybody who stopped by to watch my videos today. Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to comment down below. I can't wait to hear from you. Moving on to DIY number three, we are going to be making some beaded bumblebees today. I am going to say this is my favorite DIY of the eight that I'm showing you. This one is my favorite. So I have these egg beads that I picked up from Target Hotspot. I've got some, um, not paddle, well, I've got some black paddle wire, and then I've got some jewelry wire that I got from Joann's. And I have Waverly's chalk paint in the color ink. And I have Hello Hobby chalk paint in the color Tuscan Sun. And so what I'm going to do is just take these um, this egg garland apart. And I'm using one of those long egg beads as the bee body. And then I have some beads in my stash. And I'm taking one of my round beads and using it as the bee head. I also have this craft stick. And I just cut pieces off as I needed it and then cut them in half. I went in with my wire cutters and I just kind of nipped it to give it like a half circle or like a half a heart. And then I'm going to go in with my gator and sand everything down and make it smooth because these are going to be the bee wings. I did wooden bumblebees on my channel before, like maybe a year or two ago. Um, and they're pretty much the same, except on the other ones that I did a while back, I painted the wings. And on these, I'm going to do something a little different with the wings so that all the wings come out different. None of the wings are the same. And I love it. Yes, this is my favorite. Hands down, this is my favorite. So I'm taking that paddle wire and I am making a Z with it so that I can give my little bumblebee feet to stand on. So if you make a Z, you can take the longer part of it and hot glue it to the underbelly or under the body so that the bee can stand up. And then the little part of the Z will be his foot. You do have to hold it for a while until the glue starts to set, but once it does, it does stay in place. So I just run a line of glue at the top of the body and also at the bottom of the body and I put two feet at the top and two feet at the bottom. And it stands right up. And now I'm taking my black paddle wire and I'm just making some antenna and I'm taking my tweezers and I'm curling the top of that wire. You're going to set the antenna to the side and I'm going to go in with my Tuscan Sun and give this bee a nice coat of yellow paint. And all I did was add some hot glue to that hole in the center of the bead. And I just laid those black antenna in there until they set up or, you know, the glue got stiff. 
and then I just bent them back against the head of that bead so that they look like his antenna. I took some of that yellow honeycomb ribbon and I hot glued it to the um, craft stick to make the wings. And you can see here, I'm doing the same thing with that gingham ribbon, just putting some on the wood and attaching the ribbon to the wood that way. And then just cutting around it. And it gives me all these different kinds of wings. Whatever ribbon you have, you can use that and make you some wings. And I am now taking my Sharpie and I am just drawing in my rings or my lines. And I'm not being precise with them because the lines or the fuzzy, uh, it, actually it's brown too, it's not even black. The part that you see on the bee's back, it's not straight. It's not symmetrical. It's just, it's what it is. So I like that I don't have to be very precise with drawing my lines on the bead. These are so cute. Here they are. DIY number three. These are so cute on a tiered tray. In the final reveal, you'll see that I have them sprinkled throughout my um, my end, um, my final reveal. These are cute. I love how they turned out. All right, you guys, we're halfway there, and this is DIY number four. We're going to make a honey pot. So I have one of the little glass jars from Dollar Tree. I've got my Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew, antique wax, and I believe hazelnut. And I also have some of the Hello Hobby chalk paint. No, I don't. I've got some Deco Arts chalk paint in the color golden straw. So I gave the glass jar two coats of the hazelnut, and now I'm going back in with, nope, I gave it two coats of the cashew. And now I'm going back in with the hazelnut, and I'm just smudging it all around. I want this jar to look like a clay pot, an old weathered clay pot. So I'm just adding on layers and layers and layers of paint, different colors, just adding them until... I like how it looks. I'm just going to keep doing it until it looks good to me. Now I'm going in with the Antique Wax by Waverly, giving that a brush. Going in with Waverly chalk paint in the color white. It's late. It's not white. That's plaster. It is late and I am getting sleepy. I can't believe I have eight DIYs for this collab. I couldn't stop you guys. I got started on this bee decor. It was so much fun and I just kept going and going. There's still a couple more that I want to do, but we'll see. You guys let me know if you want to see them or not because we can move on to something else. <laughs> But I had a blast putting these together. Thanks again to Robin from Crafts Unleashed for inviting me to do this collab. I, I'm just blessed. I'm just blessed. Thank you. So now that I've got everything all painted, I'm just adding some hot glue on. And I know you guys have seen this because I've even seen it a thousand times on YouTube. How you can add some glue and make it drip down and look like it's honey dripping from the pot. So, of course, I had to do it, too. I had to um, try my hand at it and, and put my spin on it. So, I've got the hot glue dripping down the pot. 
I went ahead and painted it with some white chalk paint just to give it some color for the golden straw to hold on to so it wouldn't look so opaque. It wouldn't look so like sheer. I wanted it to look um, solid, if that makes any sense. So now that I've got that all painted, I took a piece of cardboard and I cut it out to the shape of what I feel like is a honeycomb, like one of the little pieces that you would see inside of a honeycomb. And I wrote the word honey on it, but I did it like you would see it in, on Winnie the Pooh. How his honey pot always has the ends that are backwards. I thought that was whimsical and cute. And so that's why I did it. And now I'm going to make a honey dipper. And I am using a plunger from Dollar Tree, some wood dowels from Dollar Tree, and my golden straw once again. And the white chalk paint or plaster chalk paint from Waverly. So I'm going to cut that bottom piece of the plunger off because it looks like a honey dipper. It's got the ridges in it and everything. It's perfect. So I cut that off. I mean, the minute I saw it, that's what I thought of. So that's why I used um, that for this DIY. It just screamed honey dipper. So I went in with one of my little whittling tools after I got it cut off and I whittled a hole down in the center. Of course, if you have a drill, you can do that. I have a drill. I just didn't feel like pulling it out. I don't mind crafting with my hands. Um, it just, I love the process. So I didn't feel like getting that big old drill out. So I just used my whittling tool and I whittled a hole out of the center and put some wood glue down in there and added my wooden dowel. I cut it down a little bit because I felt like it was too long. And because I want this glue to drip off of this dipper, I taped it to whatever I had handy, which happened to be my Mod, Mod Podge jar or container. And I'm just hot gluing the end of this honey dipper and letting it drip down. And then I will take my glue gun and like pull it back up to the top because it's going to drip so far and then it's going to break off and you're not going to get that drip that you want. So I'm letting it drip and then I will take my I will take my um, glue gun and pull that glue right back up and let it drip again. And I kept doing that until it looked, you know, like it was dripping. It looked the way I wanted it to look. And then I just painted it with the golden straw. And I like how this one turned out. I'm surprised because I didn't think I was going to be able to get the glue drips to hang that long and to be that thick. I thought it was just going to, you know, break off on the end and just be stringy. So I'm happy with it. I think it's cute. I added some twine. So I added the twine to the top of the jar and we're going to call it done. Moving on to DIY number five. We're going to be using those... Um, leftover pieces from the wood plunger. I ended up being able to get three pieces from that. So we're going to use two and we're going to make some rolling pins because they're going to be super cute for tiered tray decor. I've seen these on YouTube also, and I had to try my hand at them as well. So all I'm going to do is paint one in my Waverly chalk paint in ink, and I'm going to paint one in the Hello Hobby chalk paint in Tuscan Sun. This goes really quick. If you blink, you're going to miss it. So I have these wood bells, you guys, and I have had these in my stash forever. And so I'm using them as the handles to my rolling pin. I have seen people use those like earplugs, this foam or spongy kind of earplugs from Dollar Tree on the end for the handles of the rolling pins. But I just had these wood bells and I thought, why not? They're perfect. So I cut these down at about five inches each. And I got them painted. I'm adding on my wood bells. I'm not going to paint the bells. I love the natural look of that. So we're going to leave it alone. And again, I am using that honeycomb um, ribbon. And this is the thinner width of ribbon. So I'm just going to put a little piece at the end. And then I'm going to tie a shoestring bow and get that glued on. And for the yellow one, I'm going to use this gingham check ribbon and do the same thing. Put a little band on one end and then tie a jute string bow and get that glued on. Then I'll be going in in my own hand 
uh, with a pencil first and then back with a Sharpie. And I will be writing be blessed on one and on the other one, I will be writing be kind. And that's going to be it. These are going to be done and they look really cute on my tiered tray. As you can see, I didn't like it, so I erased it and started over. And that's one of the things that is really great about using a pencil. You can fix it. And here they are. To DIY number six, gonna be making a bee skep. Need a Dollar Tree clay pot. You need some jute twine. I have a piece of black felt, some yellow wildflowers, and I am using my Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew. Just getting the clay pot painted and adding my jute cord. Moving on to DIY number six, we're making a bee scup. Very easy. All I'm doing is taking this Dollar Tree little planter that I painted in the color plaster or cashew, cashew by Waverly. And I just did that so that if any of it shows through, it won't look so bad. It won't look so orange. So I just took some jute twine and wrapped it around the little terracotta pot. And now I'm taking some black felt to make my um, beehive opening. And then I'm going to take these little bees that are stickers from this, I guess, this wall art from Dollar Tree. But I'm going to change those bees, as you guys will see in the final um, reveal when I'm done with this project, because I didn't like them. I mean, they were cute, but I didn't like them. They look too, they look too much like a sticker. I mean, they are a sticker and they looked exactly like a sticker and I just didn't like it. So I took them off and I ended up using some of my Dollar Tree ribbon that I have that has bumblebees on it. I cut the bees out of that ribbon and I put those on instead. And then I liked it so much better. It, it was the look I was going for. This, the paper stickers just look like paper stickers. So in the final reveal, you can see the ribbon bees that I added, and they look better. I love these. These are much better. So just simple, cute, and easy, and really fun for your tiered tray decor. So you guys, we're going to make a garland. This is DIY number seven. We got one more to go. You can't have a tiered tray without garland. So 
we're going to use some various beads. Some I've painted, some I've dyed, and I am still using that um, nesting box with the bees on it. And I want to cut it into the shape of a honeycomb, like what I was saying about what I think the inside of a honeycomb looks like. So I have this cardboard piece that I've already cut out and I just traced it on the side of the box and I'm going to be using two pieces of it and then I'm going to cut it out, get it cut out in that shape. And then we're going to glue those two shapes together. You guys, if you look at the side of the table, you can see my little lineup of bees. Um, the one in the middle is the one that came with the other bee from Dollar Tree on that um, bees and butterflies sign. And then the other two are two that I just sketched out on paper. And I thought I would use them um, for DIY and I didn't end up using them. But I'm going to keep them in my stash because I'll use them eventually. Or if not, I'll use them next year. I'll go ahead and put them with my craft paper. And that way I can keep them nice and flat and they won't get wrinkled up. So I am just going in with my beads and making a pattern that I like. Um, I'm doing gray, pink, or not pink. It's like a melon color. I tried to dye the beads or paint the beads to match that orange box. It's a little off, but I still like it. I did gray, orange, orange, yellow, yellow, gray, orange, orange, yellow, yellow, gray. That was my pattern. And then I just took my jute twine, the end of my jute twine, and I hot glued it, sandwiched it between the two um, pieces of that box that has the bees on it. And then I'm just going to make a tassel. So I'm taking some white and yellow twine from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some of my jute cord. I'm going to use some of the buffalo check or the gingham ribbon. And I'm also going to use some of the honeycomb ribbon. And I just make my tassels using my hand. I just wrap it around my, my fingers about like 24 times, 26 times, something like that. Now here I tied it off and I tied it off too soon because I realized you didn't add your ribbon. So now what? Well, we're going to just cut that off and add the ribbon and then tie it back up. Easy fix. Just adding the ribbon to the jute twine. And then I cut it too soon. I, I don't know what I was doing. So I'm tying the tassel. Getting everything secured and all tied up. Lining it up, making it even. And then I cut it. Why I cut the bottom, I don't know. Because I needed to secure the top. After I tied it together... You take another piece of twine and you go around the top just to give you that tassel look. And I didn't do that. I cut it first. But it's a quick fix. Once again, I just went back and tied it at the top. Now get it all trimmed up. I added a little bit of glue on my final knot just to make sure it doesn't come loose. And then I'm going to get it all trimmed up. And that's the tassel. Just tie it to the end of that twine. And here it is. Really cute for a tiered tray. I like how simple this was, but it's really pretty. Anytime you make a garland, it's really simple to do. It doesn't take a whole lot. It's not rocket science, but they really add to your tiered tray decor, and they're really cute. I have tons of garlands laying around from Christmas to Valentine's Day to Easter. All right, you guys, this is DIY number 
eight and the final one for this video. If you've made it this far, please give me a bumblebee emoji in the comments. If you don't have emojis, just type in the word B or the letter B. Let me know you hung out with me through this super awesome and super long bumblebee decor collab with me today. Let me know you hung out. I would greatly appreciate it. So I am going to make a book stack. Simple and easy. I've done it on my channel before. I love doing them. So we're going to do one for this bumblebee decor so we can add it to our tiered tray. I've got these bumblebees. I'm sorry. Again, I, I don't know where they came from. I have so much stuff, you guys, in my stash. It's ridiculous. Um, it, I could open a small store. It's that bad. And I really need to go through and work through my stash. And so I'm pulling pieces out and I have no memory of where they came from because it's old. So please forgive me. But I have these wooden bumblebees. I have this bumblebee ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree. Book stack, of course, is from Dollar Tree. And I've got Waverly Chalk Paint and Ink. I've got Hello Hobby Tuscan Sun. And then this orangey color, I mix that up. I use the pumpkin from Hello Hobby. And I don't even remember all the different colors of paint I tried to make. Um, just something peachy, orangey colored. I don't know why. I just felt like I wanted that color. So here you see me going in with some Dollar Tree spackle and covering up the hole of that bumblebee. That did not work. That spackle fell right out that hole. Doesn't matter what I did. It fell out. So I ended up putting a piece of jute cord there. I tied it in a knot. And that is a trick I got from who? Robin over at Crafters Unleashed. I saw her take some jute cord and tie it in knots to fill in holes. And it was super cute. And I snagged it. Thank you, Robin. I appreciate you. And it was an awesome idea. If you can't get your spackle to stick in the hole, put some jute cord in it. Especially if you're working on something that's country, feeling kind of rustic, it works. <laughs> so now that I've got my bumblebee painted and my box is painted and dry, I'm just going in with my Dollar Tree letters. And I'm going to go ahead and get those transferred down. And then I'm going to put the bee stickers on this one. And for this project, the bees worked out well. The bee stickers were fine. I am fighting with that transfer tape though. And I don't know why. I Usually I don't have a hard time with the Dollar Tree transfer tape, but this particular batch was not letting go of those letters. So it's going to say, be fearless, be kind, and be you. You would not come off of that transfer tape. It just, it tore apart. So I said, okay, fine. There's always option number two. And option number two is to write it in your own hand. So that's what I did. Just adding my B stickers. And then I'm going to go in with my two ribbons. I'm going to use the bumblebee ribbon and I'm also going to use the gingham ribbon in black and white. And I'm just going to do two strips of that around the box. Hot gluing it down. Just doing a little cleanup, getting the spider webs off of there. And now I'm just going to attach my bee with a jingle block or a tumbling tower block. And I'm going in with one of my paint markers and just giving that block some color so that it's not, um, 
it doesn't stand out as much with it being in the natural color. It's very obvious that it's there. So I just wanted to try to blend it in a little bit by using the paint marker. And then I'm Mod Podging over top of my stickers and my um, transfers to make sure they stay down. And this one's going to be done. And here is the finished result of DIY number eight. And that is the last DIY for this video. I can't wait to show you the final reveal of everything all put together and how it is staged on my tiered tray. So stick around. All right, you guys, here's everything. I love it. The honey pot with the little bumblebee and the honey dipper, the bee scap, the garland. You see, I've got my little wooden bees all sprinkled around. I love the rolling pins and the double sided sign. I. <laughs> it was very hard to choose and that's all I can say. And now you guys can see why. More of the little bumblebees. They are adorable and they are my favorite. I, I'm grinning from ear to ear. They just make me smile because they're so fun. Thank you guys for being here with me today for eight eight DIYs. Thank you. I know this video is a little bit long. I usually don't do videos this long, but this is an awesome collab with an awesome friend and I was blessed to be asked to do it. So thank you for sticking in here with